What's going on everybody? So today I am super excited to show you all what I've been doing on the account. Now I am still approaching Trailblazer level 40 because I did not refresh a ton of energy. And so I've been testing out Sampo really, really insanely. And he has absolutely impressed me because of his massive, massive damage between his dots and his overall skills. I think this guy was a little underrated by myself and a lot of other people just because um, a lot of people didn't understand quite where his damage was coming from. Now, with that being said, we're gonna go over his skills, what makes him good, what build, what light cone, all that good stuff, and some traces as well as some Eidolons to keep in mind. And then I'm gonna show you all in game timestamps in the description down below. Let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna do is go over his skills and one of the reasons why he's so good. And that's gotta start off with the talent. So right here, the talent causes any attack of Sampos to have a 65% base chance to inflict wind shear for three turns. Every single time they're inflicted with wind shear, they're gonna take dot damage equal to 26% of his attack at the beginning of each turn. And that can stack up to five times, up to potentially five times 26, which is roughly 130% attack of his attack, right? And it's not that difficult to acquire uh, five stacks on someone considering his skill here can actually land potentially four additional hits um, and a random hit if you have the idol on. So his skill is going to deal damage to a single enemy and four extra times with each dealing wind damage equal to his attack to a random enemy. This is really, really important because we could do some massive, massive damage with this, assuming it all lands on the same target, right? We're talking about four additional hits. Um, so four times 36 can equal, what is that? Like 144 plus 36, like roughly 170, 180% attack damage, plus an additional time from the talent here, um, which is even more insane or idle on rather. Keep in mind that each one of these and apply the wind shear. Basic attack, just a simple base attack, just like normal. A little bit of damage, that's it. Ultimate, this is one thing that I wish was a little bit different, um, but is still good for Sampo himself. The problem with this ultimate is that he only really benefits himself from the additional dot damage taken. So the ultimate on someone else might be a lot better because the damage is higher, whereas this damage is really low. Most of the value you're getting is from the additional dot damage increase but generally speaking, unless you have an ability comp built out with many people like Himiko, actually, since she's a destruction type, uh, you, you might be able to get some value out of her burns, etc. But unless you have someone like that, you're not going to get a ton of value out of this ultimate. So a little bit of low damage, but definitely helps out his wind shear here. And his technique here, a little bit of a blind, blind cannot detect your enemy team. And in combat, it's a 100% chance to delay all enemies action by 25%. Pretty simplistic. His technique's pretty good. You know, extra 25% reduction of turn meter is always really, really solid. So the main premise behind this character is to apply as many wind shears as possible and then just let them tick away, which is really, really good because of all of his hits and such. He's really good at breaking weakness bars. So if he's only only wind damage, this is totally fine. And on top of that, he's really, really nice at Again, doing damage over time. So you're just constantly, constantly applying so much damage if you just keep getting his skill out. Now, as for his build and his light cone, first off, I actually want to talk about the light cone. There are a couple that are really, really excellent. I actually have the names written down um, that I don't have at the current moment. The first one's going to be a five-star one called In the Name of the World. This is going to increase the damage dealt to debuffed enemies, which he's going to be debuffing so many times, and he's going to be increasing his effect hit and attack when he uses a skill. So very, very strong light cone, probably the best one. The second one, which in my opinion is the probably second best one, super, super powerful. For every debuff the target enemy has, the damage dealt by the wearer increases by 18%. This can go up um, to 24%. This is good night and sleep well, the one I have on currently. And it can stack up to three times. So potentially an additional 72% uh, damage. This also applies to the dots as well, which is really, really good. Another one is Eyes of the Prey, increasing effect hit and dot damage. And then the last one is a free-to-play version. If you guys want a free-to-play option, um, is Fermata. It's going to increase the bright effect dealt by the wearer and increases the damage to enemies afflicted by shock or wind shear by 16%. This also applies to dot. So 
he's going to be applying wind shear the dot increases the damage uh so really works well with his kit and this one is free um this one is not as far as i remember <laughs> the next one i want to go over is the relics here now i do not have great pieces on him okay i do not i have not farmed a ton of pieces yet but this is working for me so far so the first thing is um, you're going to want to focus on two stats in particular well, i guess three stats speed effect hit and attack do not really care about crit rate or crit damage although he can do some really solid damage with his skill and if you can get crit rate and crit damage even better but the main focus should be attack because the dots cannot crit therefore you want attack to scale up those dots as much as possible so on top of that the eagle of twilight line is the best set in my opinion it's going to increase the wind damage uh, as well as whenever he uses an ultimate is going to get a little bit of extra turn um, meter the other set you could potentially run is musketeer set so the extra attack and speed uh and a basic attack damage although this one i i think i like the extra turn meter boost um, whenever we use our ultimate because we're going to be using our ultimate pretty much off cooldown we just want to get it out there as much as humanly possible so that's pretty nice so the eagle uh set is very very good as for um, stats, as I mentioned, we're going to want to focus on attack and effect hit. So you can see here, I just have as much pieces as I possibly can. If I could, I would definitely run some sort of crit rate, even over crit damage, but specifically something like an attack set if I happen to have any other piece. Honestly, it's probably better if I just run this piece instead because of the main set attack. But, you know, I was messing around with the set instead and it's been pretty nice i have an attack boot which is pretty nice as for the sphere and the rope here this is not the set you want you're going to want the space ceiling station uh, in order for you to get some extra attack and extra attack when we reach 120 speed or higher so 24 percent attack again that's going to boost up the dot damage i happen to run this because i happen to have a wind boot uh, damage boost sphere and i don't happen to have one for the opposite set uh, in herta's space station so super super nice um for me to run that and that's kind of what i'm going uh with so far as for the rope here just an attack percentage with some speed on it has the matching set so I felt like, okay, I'll just get the extra HP. Why not? So that's going to be the relics. I would highly recommend you boost up your attack and your effect as much as possible because we do want to be landing those debuffs and it can get a little tricky sometimes if you don't have them. Now we move on to Eidolons. So when we're talking about Eidolons and Traces, there's a few ones that you want to focus on. If you're not interested in investing a ton into Sambo, that's totally fine. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the Eidolons because it's sort of a whale mechanic or just a luck mechanic. If there is one that you really want, it is the first one because it's going to go ahead and deal an extra time to a random enemy whenever we use a skill, which is actually a lot of extra damage passively throughout the battle. Obviously, being able to go ahead and get this second one whenever we defeat an enemy, we're going to get windshield across all people is really, really solid. We have, of course, some uh, skill upgrades and such, um, but also... This one at idle on four, when a skill hits an enemy five or more stacks of wind shear, immediately take 8% of current wind shear damage. This is actually stacking up insane amounts against bosses. And then of course we have wind shear damage multiplying increases, which is also very, very good. Honestly, his all of his Eidolons are actually extremely good, but his first one is probably my favorite. So if you can get one extra copy of him, even better as for traces what do we want to focus on well there's a few we don't care about like effect resistance don't even bother with this honestly um the attack one is pretty important effect hit rate is pretty important um the bonus ability here very very important and then of course upgrading your skill is going to be important and your talent is going to be important honestly not upgrading your ultimate isn't the worst thing because you're actually not getting a ton of value from this. And same with the basic. If you don't want to upgrade the basic or ultimate in preservation of your Trailblaze energy, that's actually totally fine. Um, just make sure to get the skill and the talent upgraded because those are the ones where your heavy damage comes from. So I'm going to hop into a random fight here that I don't really care about and just show you kind of what his skills are able to do. So we're going to hop into this. I have Sila. She's a very good DPS, but I want to showcase Sampo here. So we're going to use the skill and obviously i don't really care about the basic because everyone's seen the basic it's just a basic that does a little bit of damage and you can see here we hit two in the middle two on the middle uh left hand side and one on the right hand side and that is because it randomly hits enemies very very impactful there i'm gonna go ahead and heal up here and try to get cycled back over to sampo um i think sila might kill off this guy yeah, well, if we were able to get over to Sampo, you could see that um, it is randomly hitting. So the less enemies that we have, 
even better. I want to show this on a boss, but I just wanted to showcase some of the skills here. We also have the ultimate, which I will activate in just a moment here. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and have um, Sila kill off someone here so I can showcase what that looks like. Um, so we're going to ult here. Hopefully we don't kill. This is kind of what the ultimate looks like. We're going to go ahead and apply the wind shear. <laughs> hopefully to everyone as well as the increased damage and just a little bit of damage to those targets so get a little bit of damage out there increase our dot effects and then of course actually get hopefully some additional wind shears because it's not just the basic and skill that can apply wind shear here we go um another enemy here i want to showcase how much damage you could potentially do when you have a singular target out there so I'm gonna have Sila kill off uh, these two on the side, and then we're gonna have Sampo go. So you can see Sila, very, very good, right? She can go ahead and kill someone off, get an extra turn, kill another person off. Sampo could kind of do the same thing in terms of killing multiple people due to his random hitting, but if it all hits the same target, his damage is absolutely absurd. I mean, he hits all those same, um, uh, you know, dagger random hits all on the same target, and then he's also applying the wind shear. You cannot forget about that because um, it's super important. So, for example, if I hit everyone here, okay, we also go ahead and get the wind shear, assuming we're able to land it. So, that's why it's crucial to get effect hit if we can. Uh, if you cannot, then you're going to miss out on a ton of damage. So, getting some good gear on this guy if you can is going to be pretty important so that you can actually see how effective he is. Now I'm going to run into some simulated universe to see some more complicated boss fights where you can actually see some more effectiveness of Sampo here. All right, just to show you all, we are in the simulated universe world five here as a pretty solid example. We don't really have a ton of bonuses to support um, Sampo. This is kind of the base damage that you'll see. We have a little bit of uh, terminator manipulation here. Uh, we have a little bit of restoration whenever we take damage from Don a little bit of freezing, a little bit of extra crit rate, a little bit of extra attack based on some shields. So definitely some things that are going to help out. But overall, this is a pretty accurate example. Keep in mind, we always want to use our techniques whenever we get a chance. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and blind these guys so that we can get that 25% terminator reduction. And I want to show you kind of what Sampo is capable of here. So obviously the first thing that we really enjoy about him is that we are able to apply those dots now you notice here in the middle on the boss we got resisted so this is a really really core thing about sampo is that if you don't have enough effect hit, which to be fair um, in some of the fights on the simulated universe i found that i'm really lacking some effect hit you lose a lot of damage however he still does really solid damage even if he's not necessarily landing um, the wind shears every single time and you can see there he has had five wind shears on this left one you can see up here um this little thing is wind shear. You can have up to five. So we got five on the left-hand side, three on the right-hand side, and two on that middle elite here. And we're gonna keep hitting. And we're gonna slow this down so you guys can actually see um, kind of how much damage uh, this is going to do. So first off, boom, 1,500 damage on the left-hand side, 700 damage in the middle, and 900 damage on the right-hand side. That is from a single skill and an ultimate uh, applied to all the enemies. Very, very solid damage. That is far more than Sila was even able to contribute here in this fight so far, um, despite having some of my best gear, as well as some of the strongest, um, what's it called, light cone that I have, okay? So I'm going to use Sila's skill to try to remove the guys on the right and left hand side, uh, and then move on to the boss. Can we kill? Ooh, we did not crit. So with that, we're just going to go ahead and use our skill. Maybe we can kill the one on the right. We applied wind shear to everyone, so that's pretty nice. Uh, that means I'm going to go ahead and kill off this right-hand side with Sila, and then I can move over to the left-hand side, and hopefully I crit for a finish. Not quite, but the wind shear is going to tick, and look at that, 1300 damage consistently on the boss due to wind shear. Uh, it was 700 before, and now it's 1300. We're going to go ahead and actually just uh, apply some basic here. We can go ahead and freeze the boss. And here we go. So now we have Sampo coming up. And this is where it gets really interesting is when just the boss is available. Because if you have, for example, if you're running Sila, who's considered one of the best DPS, and I still love her in this comp because she's really good at clearing out the ads and then chaining some abilities together and doing some massive damage, especially if you have the right um, blessings. The key with Sampo is that he's actually a really, really good boss killer because you're applying all those dots and all the random hitting skills to the main target. And so what we'll see here is we're going to hit all five times on the boss, which guarantees almost that we're going to permanently stack five wind shears 
And you saw that Sila's ultimate did about 3k um, without a crit. It does about 7k with a crit from what I've seen. Now, Sampo doesn't have amazing attack. He doesn't have the proper gear, but if he had the proper gear with a lot more attack and the potential to increase his dots, we could expect to see 2K dot damage every single time the boss takes a turn, which is just absolutely insane. So check this out. Here we go, massive damage. We applied all those different wind shears on the boss. If we look here, we click on the boss. We have five wind shear stacks and then another three wind shear stacks. How crazy is this? Four turns on this one, two turns on that one. So I want to show you all what this means when the boss actually takes a turn. Um, and we'll let this take a turn. Here we go. Just basic a couple times. No big deal. We'll go ahead and activate the shield to get some extra damage over to Sompo. So we can actually see a little bit of amped up dot damage. Obviously, if you have March 7th, this is doable um, with the same blessings. Here we go. 21 and 1100 damage that is 3.2k 3.3k damage just from dot effects and guess what we can continue to load up on dots here um so right here we refresh those dots and we have five dots the three wind shear comes from uh the weakness break that's where the extra damage is coming from we can go ahead and apply the weakness to dots here from sampo's ultimate so let's go ahead and do that hopefully we don't get um resist or anything so we applied some more uh, wind shears and you can see here with the ultimate we applied that dot vulnerability which is 22 percent extra dot damage so we're gonna go ahead and just basic it through not even care about sila for right now and just watch sampo absolutely wreck face you can see here that is like 3,000 damage plus another 4k no not that wasn't for that was 4k damage so we got 7k damage out of just like ticking damage as well as the skill and that's going to be consistently applied not quite uh 7k damage around 5k damage just from the dots and his skill going off every turn he is an absolute monster of a boss killer guys so so powerful an absolute disgusting character especially if you actually gear him correctly which i cannot because i don't have the gear for right now so really stack up that attack really stack up that effect tip just to give you an idea here when we're fighting bosses Sila really drops in value um, and you can see here with her ultimate assuming we crit here 7.6k which is really really solid to be fair right and we can get another hit off here uh, which did about uh, I think that was roughly 3k two and a half three k so total 10k damage which is good right but it's it's actually potentially less than um Sampo here due to how consistent he is and check out the weakness break on this character it is so strong especially against those bosses that are weak to win damage keep in mind that Sila has my best gear I've said this before but best gear best light cone and Sampo is keeping up with Sila in terms of damage in this fight it is absolutely crazy so definitely give Sampo a try guys if you have him um, especially if you have that first idol on I really think he was a little underrated I myself underrated him uh, up until I wanted to try out some Nihility characters because I got so many dupes of that light cone you can see it's superimposed uh three and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to invest into Sampo because I don't really have a great wind damage dealer. And I'm not a huge fan of Don Hung uh, just in general, just because I don't like the character style and I don't think it's like fun to use. So I was like, you know what? We're going to dive into Sampo and I do not regret it. In fact, he's made my main team now, especially since it gives me a fourth element in my team. And you always want as many elements as possible so you can weakness break as much as possible. Okay. And you can see here, if you happen to get some Nihility, uh, you know blessings here at the beginning of enemy stern trigger extra dot one time dealing 90 percent of the original dot boom you get extra dot damage super super powerful can really really combo well there's a lot of nihility options for um sampo in the uh in the simulated universe so definitely definitely huge 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 character to to, to upgrade and i definitely recommend it so I'm tripping on my words a little bit because I'm so excited about this character. I, I've been using him for a few days now, and I've been really, really enjoying it. Uh, or I should say a couple days, not really a few days. But thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you guys have used Sampo or you potentially have seen some more value, or maybe you found a better combination of gear light cones, let me know in the comments section down below. This is what I found to be the best. Oh, maybe you have that five-star light cone that I mentioned earlier. That's going to probably be a little bit better. But other than that... You're going to do some massive damage with Sampo. Have fun. Slap some dots on. More guides to come. Sub to the channel. I'll see you all tomorrow.